Good morning and welcome to the 103rd podcast of Andy Colley Talks Cricket Memorabilia. It's rather a wet and windy morning here in Mitcham, but um, we're full of cheer after a magnificent victory by England in the T20 over Australia yesterday. Eight wickets, a great win. Um, Butler, 71 or 32 balls. Bowling was fantastic. It was a real stuffing. So uh, we're over the moon with that one. I mean, you, I know a lot of us don't like uh, T20 cricket and uh, the likes, but um, you've got to admire sometimes the techniques for these players, um, batting and bowling. It does make a bit of a spectacle, I have to say. So uh, England on the up. So uh, let's hope we can uh, carry on and uh, um, win that tournament. Touch wood. Anyway, so I'm um, still feeling rather smug after last week with um, my poor prediction of Liverpool winning 2 nil against Manchester United. Um, and it was 5 nil, so fantastic. Unfortunately, they let it slip yesterday with a draw at Brighton. But there we are. Can't have them all, so uh, I have to wait till next week and see how we got on next week. Uh, so this week, uh, what we're going to do this week, we've obviously got a bit of a, um, on a bit of a downer with some deaths in the uh, family in Australia, unfortunately. Uh, especially Alan Davison and Ashley Mallett. Um, and Phil Pop went this morning, I understand. So just a couple of bits and pieces here I've got on Alan Davidson, which is the first one here, which is, I've got a photograph to go with this as well, which is uh, the 1955 side. Uh, Alan Davidson's here. Got a lovely photograph of that someone, but I can't find it at the moment this morning. But uh, that's in the autograph album, which is uh, Arthur McIntyre's Benefit um, autographed cricket album, which is a rather lovely um, album. So uh, I'm quite pleased to have this one. I bought this one from the uh, Ornate of the Guide Dogs for the Blind. And there's Arthur McIntyre there in the front. So that's his Benefit book. That's quite a nice album. And then another one here is uh, P&O Lines, fully signed. Um, a souvenir program from the Himalaya. They come over in 1961, and then we're going to flip through these all, uh, all fully signed. Lovely photograph of the ship there with all the signatures. Um, just flip through to Alan Davidson's, which is uh, there he is there. So that's a lovely image and little right up there pen picture of Alan Davidson in his memory. What a great bowler he was, and all rounder really. So uh, got some good runs too. And then Ashley Mallett, who uh, I see in 1968, this is a, a signature sheet, 1968 Australians, captain by Bill Laurie, with a tie. This one came off of the SS Canberra in their uh, bar on the uh, ship, the Cricketers Bar. That's quite a nice uh, item there with Ashley Mallett. And then Ashley Mallett was manager of the Aboriginal team that come down to play at Farncombe. Um, I've got a, I did put a photograph of that online yesterday, so... Uh, that was a good day for Falcon Creek Cup, all the mayor and everything was down there, so it was a great day. Um, and we beat them, which is fair enough. Richie Benno was on the radio, um, giving the uh, leg spinner a bit of a boost, but unfortunately he went quite a long way that day, so we're uh, very pleased to not say that we won that one. So anyway, this week's turned up this week. We've obviously got the uh, Knights catalogue, which is next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, lovely produced... Um, Catalogue there again from Tim, some nice items in there. Um, so that should be quite a successful thing for him. Some lovely diaries there from the West Indies on that one. And then also this week, uh, what's turned up here? We've got um, a facsimile sheet, which is uh, here. South Africans, uh, 1947. Um, it's only eight quid, so I'm quite pleased with those, just to sort of get a... Uh, Make sure you've got the right signatures on your proper seats, uh, signature sheets. So that was that. So books turned up this week. And a fantastic book here, Wilfred Rhodes, The Triumphal Arch, which is a lovely production from Patrick Faraday. But it also, I haven't got into this book just yet, it's only turned up this week, but it's also got a uh, compact disc there um, of an interview with David Frith and... Wilfred Rose in 1970. You'll have, uh, well, I've listened to that, and it's uh, you need to concentrate quite hard on what uh, Wilfred's saying, but it's uh, a great record of some of the great days that he had in uh, taking his 4,000 wickets in test, in uh, not test cricket, first class cricket, and all those runs. So that's quite a nice publication there from Patrick. This one here, 
the deluxe model was 95 of those um, and they're 75 pound and the ordinary one is 25 pound um, so you don't get the um, CD with that but there's also a dash cover come with that as well which is here and there I'll take it as the triumphal arch there look so that's quite a nice dust sheet cover there with that book so well done Patrick I'm looking forward to reading that uh, possibly this week if I've got time this week um, the other thing I went out to a Phil Tufnell evening launch of his new book here which is uh, how not to be a cricketer but he was a good cricketer there's no doubt about that good foot uh, bowler so uh, batsman wasn't quite so good but um, he was saying that at the uh, event that um, the stuff he found in his shed in lockdown was the um, inspiration for this book and uh, so you would have thought there would have been a photograph of all the kit in his shed in the book in the book but there's nothing at all not a picture anywhere which is a bit disappointing you think okay he's got 17 or so cases of uh, all his clothes and his first bat he got his uh, on his debut and what have you but there's no pictures of it whatsoever so that's a bit of a disappointment really so uh, nothing worse than getting a book with no pictures in it so you can have a look and uh, sort of compare things but um, there we go so that's that one from Phil Tufnell this week um, something I didn't show the other week were these photographs here um, which are purchased off of John Philby um, got some lovely photographs actually this one here um, 1930 Australians with Lord and Lady Belper, 1930, uh, near Nottingham. Um, they're not all there, but um, I've got Archie Jackson and Bill Woodforce. I've got a little child on his lap there, so I don't know where that, whose that was. Ted Beckett down the front there, so uh, quite a nice photograph that. And then a couple of other photographs that came with that were Stan McKay playing golf in a jumper that uh, only golfers will probably get away with. But uh, quite nice there on the 1930 tour as well. Another one here of uh, Hornybrook and Ponsford playing golf, probably on the same day, I'd imagine. Um, a tyre a little bit more conservative, but um, that was a dress code in those days. So uh, nice photographs there, original photographs. And there's one more here of um, Stan McCabe, 1938 at Lord's. Um, probably just turned up from the from the uh, journey over having a practice at Lawn. So that's quite a nice one from 1938. Again, press photographs, sport in general. So uh, it's always nice to get the sport in general ones because you know they're uh, more or less genuine photographs. And the other one that um, I've got there was um, the great Viv, uh, not Viv, Barry Richards um, at the Oval. Graham Roop in the background there, who was a teammate of mine a few years later. Um, so. Great poise there from Barry Richards clipping it round the corner for four runs. So there we are. So that's all the bits that's turned up in the last couple of weeks. Um, so behind me today, I just want to show you this cricket cigarettes. This one, this is from Jamaica, believe it or not. Oh, a bit fell out already. Um, Ten cigarettes. Uh, we've got cigarettes are made for a blend of choice tobacco. Uh, Kingston, Jamaica. So they're all the way from Jamaica, those ones. Quite a nice. Oh, there we go. Nice little uh, cigarette case there. And then behind me here today, we've got a lovely set of these uh, gauntlets, I suppose they're going to be. These wiki keeping gloves here, which are fantastic gloves, Victorian gloves. Um, sort of golden age sort of stuff with. Uh, Blackham and all that lot uh, sort of wore these, but these are in fantastic condition. Um, if I can get the arm in there, look, and it's got a couple of cane handles or uh, protection there, and also some ventilation in the back there. Um, so, uh, quite a nice uh, pair of old wicket keeping gloves. I think they're worth a great deal of money, obviously, but uh, again, you've got the ventilation in the front and the back there. So, uh, nice pair of wicket keeping gloves there. Anyway, on the uh, future front, we've got um, an interview lined up with uh, Nicholas Sharp, who's a very good collector of um, Sussex memorabilia mainly, but a um, bit of all sorts, and purports to have one of the oldest cricket balls ever found. So we'll be looking forward to going down to see Nicholas and uh, getting a nice view on his collection. 
uh, Ramsey Sinji stuff and all sorts of things. So um, looking forward to that. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, onwards and upwards and good luck to England on the next game. Cheers. See you next week. Bye.